Good evening, high school football fans. This is High School Football America for January 26, 2017. I'm Jeff Fisher, host of the show and founder and editor-in-chief of High School Football America and HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com, coming to you from the Lone Star State. Over the last uh, 24 uh, hours, we've been talking Texas high school football here with a lot of great coaches uh, putting together a couple of events with Crossover, our good partners uh, out of New York City, breaking down that game film for you. So we're over here uh, for about 36 hours, and i got to tell you, there's nothing better than breaking bread with Texas high school football coaches and talking about all the great things going on in the Lone Star State. We'll be talking about that uh, coming up over the next couple of weeks, what we're doing with Crossover here in the state of Texas. We're going to have a great show for you tonight, a long chat with our National Coach of the Year. Uh, We, uh, about um, six years ago, began a partnership with the National High School Coaches Association, which has been naming National Coaches Coaches of the Year in 20 boys and girls sports, and uh, we have been presenting the uh, National Coach of the Year and National Player of the Year in cooperation with the NHSCA. I'm the head of the uh, nominating committee there for the National High School Coaches Association, and tonight we are proud to announce our National Coach of the Year and our National Player of the Year. Again, in cooperation with the National High School Coaches Association, they've been announcing uh, Coaches of the Year since the year 2000. And tonight on the show, we are going to have Bruce Rollinson, our 2016 National High School Coach of the Year. What a year Bruce Rollinson and the Monarchs had. Ended up number 14 in the nation in the High School Football America NHSCA National Top 25. One win away from playing for a state championship. And Bruce Rollinson has uh, been doing it for nearly four decades, actually over four decades, if you count his time as a, a student athlete at Modern Day High School in Santa Ana, California, in the southern part of California, and very proud to have Bruce Rollinson uh, as this year's honoree, as our National Coach of the Year. You can go to HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com to see the uh, list. It's a long list with some great names on it. It's a who's who of high school football. We also want to uh, announce that our National Player of the Year is Tate Martell from Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. We had Kenny Sanchez, uh, Tate's head coach, on the show last week uh, talking about uh, Martell's incredible run at Bishop Gorman as his career comes to an end. And uh, next, Tate will take his winning ways to uh, the Ohio State University. Uh, Tate Martell finishing his career 45-0 as the starting quarterback at Bishop Gorman High School, uh, transferring in, taking over the uh, the reins of the program in a sophomore year. And just uh, ours is not the only national award he's won, but he's won uh, several of them this year. And congratulations to Tate on an outstanding career. As you uh, may or may not have heard Kenny Sanchez say uh, last week, yeah, he's got that big Twitter personality that he's got to own. But aside from that, he does uh, coach some youth football and uh, make sure that he mentors uh, young boys and girls in elementary school. So very proud to have Tate Martell as our 2016 National Player of the Year. But again, coming up in just a little bit, we're going to talk with Bruce Rollinson, our National Coach of the Year from Modern Day High School. A good long chat with Bruce. Uh, He'll also give us a little sneak peek of what will be a very good Modern Day Monarchs team in 2017. Uh, JT Daniels, the super sophomore who already has 100 touchdown passes in his career, will be back for two more years, as will um, all but one starter on the offense. So expect big things out of Monarchs modern day in a high national ranking when high school football america puts out its preseason uh, top 25 for 2017 that's coming up in just a little bit want to welcome into the show all of our partners that we have here each and every week uh, we mentioned that we're here in texas with crossover Uh, for a a day and a half and doing some real neat stuff with them. They will break down your game film for you folks in no way (laughs) like anybody else does. They do a wonderful job of it. Great insights, statistical analysis that you won't get through your Huddle account. It works with Huddle and it's a great way to give yourself a competitive edge and that's what we're all about with all of our partners. And speaking of a competitive edge, the good folks at Echo give you a competitive edge by giving you instant replay on your sidelines eight seconds after the 
play is finished. They uh, partnered, as you heard earlier this year, with the founder, Chad Cargill, uh, talking about uh, going with Exos. They're at the college level right now. These guys are cutting edge. They know what they're doing, except no imitations. Echo1612.com is where you go to find out more. For Crossover, go to Crossover with a K dot com forward slash HSFA to get your free demo or you can write us and we can hook that up for you. You can also click on all the banner ads at highschoolfootballamerica.com to go to all of our partners. Also brought to you tonight by Southern Sport, the good folks of uh, Southern Sport, keeping those pesky rubber pellets from field turf out of players' shoes, and they come in great colors, over 20 of them. You can get the logos on these spats that look great, and tape is expensive. You can get these spats and keep down your tape costs as well. Uh, $19.99, you can get a discount on your order by using the special code HSFA when you go to TDI Razor with a U R A Z U R, TDIRazor.com. Also brought to you tonight by the good folks at ScoreStream who give you all those scores throughout the season live on HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com on our state-by-state and top 25 scoreboards. And, you know, it's not just a football app. You can get it at Google Play and in the iTunes Store, and you can go to your favorite basketball game, soccer game, and you can keep up with, uh, keep everybody up to date with what the team is doing and post videos and photos. Learn more by going to scorestream.com. And brought to you tonight by uh, USA Today High School Sports. Once again, in 2017, we're partnering with USA Today, the leader in high school sports coverage. We're giving you great coverage from Southern California, and they're giving it to you from around the nation. Check them out at USA Today hss.com. All right, we're going to take our break, and when we come back after hearing from all of those sponsors, we're going to talk with our 2016 National High School Football Coach of the Year, Bruce Rollinson. What a run for 28 years with modern day, only 33 losses in 28 years. That's a pretty darn good record, and we're going to talk to Bruce about uh, that record and all the things that have happened over the years, four decades at modern day as a student athlete and as a coach. Bruce Rollinson, when we come back, you're listening to High School Football America coming to you tonight from the Metroplex in Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth. Doesn't get any bigger than Texas high school football. Coming back with Bruce Rollinson, you're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612 12's cutting edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, 
and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover's service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can and see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's crossover with a K.com forward slash football. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2017, High School Football America and USA Today High School Sports teaming up to give you great coverage from around the nation and specifically from Southern California. Check them out at usatodayhss.com. Well, this is the uh, third show of 2017, and uh, let's see, we've been doing this show for nearly six years, and I love the month of January because we get to do one thing that we've done all six years which is honor uh, the top coach in the country, according to the National High School Coaches Association. Uh, for those of you that uh, haven't heard the show, uh, in January when we do this, uh, I uh, donate my time to the National High School Coaches Association, a nonprofit that uh, started 28 years ago, and they've been honoring uh, coaches in 20 sports around the country uh, since 2000. I'm the head of the nominating committee for all of those sports, but uh, as you know, I'm a, a football guy and uh, had the, the pleasure this year. I actually had a lot of coaches out here in Southern California that uh, were kind of on my nominating list. And there were, uh, I think the final list was about 30 from around the country. But uh, one of the best and one of the finest here for a long time is Bruce Rollinson from Modern Day. And uh, Bruce is the 2016 NHSCA National Football Coach of the Year. Uh, High School Football America is proud to sponsor the award. And Bruce is on the line here. He's been on the show several times. And uh, just going to have some fun here talking about uh, down memory lane, uh, 30 years almost of a, as a head coach, Bruce, and I know that's going to make you feel a little bit old, but we're just so happy to have you on the show, and congratulations. I, I can't think of a better person. It was, it was a pleasure for me to put your name forth and then tell the, the committee that voted on it who you are and what you're all about. So thank you for uh, always being a friend to us, but congratulations, more importantly, on the award. So welcome to the show. Well, you know, Jeff, I, I appreciate the honor, um, you know, and, and, and I thank you personally, uh, you know, for, for nominating me. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm not about awards, but, you know, the recognition is, is fortunately, it says Bruce Rollinson, head coach, modern day high school, because that's what's important to me, uh, this, this great high school where I've pretty much spent my entire life being a, an alumnus of the high school and then coming back shortly after I graduated from USC and now in my 41st year here as 
a combination of everything in my 29th season, but I am honored. I mean, it's, it's a national recognition and, and I like the fact that other coaches have been recognized and, and those coaches have recognized me that that's important. Um, you know, we don't do it for recognition, but once in a while, a little pat on the back doesn't, (laughs) doesn't hurt. So thank you very, very much. I'm honored. You're very welcome. And uh, like I said, it's been a pleasure since moving to L.A. here four years ago to get to know you and your style. And, uh, you know, normally we're talking about the games and the kids, and we'll we'll talk a little 2017 at the end. But I want to kind of first start uh, with kind of letting the listeners know, you know, who you are as a coach, where it all starts, who you are as a man, because I know all of those things are important as you educate the young student athletes today. Uh, Let's turn back the clock on you. Uh, You do you have one or two coaches out there that uh, made an impression on you, maybe as that young athlete that you were uh, at modern day, or maybe even before that at your youth level? And 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 if you do have a couple of those people, uh, what in them resides in you today as a head coach, coach as one of the top programs in the country? Well, you know, doing all the interviews that I've done, I've always pointed to two mentors, two coaches that I had the privilege to uh, play under. Uh, You know, my high school football coach is the legendary coach, Dick Corey, who actually, you know, started the the traditions here at Modern Day. You know, within his short tenure of taking over, I think it's 1958 or... 59, you know, they were winning championships by 1960. Uh, A pretty good quarterback named John Hewitt Mm -hmm. led them to the first, uh, or excuse me, the second championship, I believe it is. And, and, you know, I I came in 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 64 as a freshman and, excuse me, 63 as a freshman. And I was fortunate enough to play three years of varsity football as a, as a youngster, and, and Coach Dick Corey uh, was, had a tremendous impact on me. Um, you know, he goes on to start the Cal State Fullerton program, uh, had, a, had a stint at USC. Sometimes they call him Mr. Second Best because twice he came in second for the Notre Dame job and <laughs> concluded his career in the NFL. Uh, but this is a powerful man who he knew how to work with kids. And, and I was one of the benefactors of his gentle yet firm mannerisms, his discipline, his accountability, um, that, that helped mold me. You know, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I was, a uh, a choir angel. You know, there was, there was a part of me that I love the game of football, but I love to have fun. But he was able to center me, focus me, and he was able to uh, instill in me the importance of academics to where when I was ready to get out of high school, I was qualified and good to go to USC. And the other thing about Coach was he was an innovator on offense. I mean, believe it or not, Jeff, we're – we're talking 65, 66 high school football, and we're running single back formations. We're running trips, um, combination routes using three wide receivers. Uh, nobody else Innovative. That, that we that, that was even coming close to that. Mm-hmm. We used to laugh because teams would call timeout. They didn't even have a line up to it. <laughs> um, and and we had great success, uh, great memories, great friendships developed. And, and, you know, when I got the job in 1989, he was the first person I called. And, and he gave me good advice. He said, Bruce, he goes, get your defense solid. He goes, he goes I, I truly believe one of the cornerstones of modern-day football is great defense. He said, Try to hire good people to take the pressure off of you so you can be a, a high-quality head coach. And then the thing that stuck in my mind is he said, go back. It's, it's in your blood. 
the traditions, the, the traditions of the high school. Some of those had fallen by the wayside, which, you know, individuals that took over the program after coach was done tried to tweak it, tried to, you know, whatever, put their mark on it, mm-hmm. which I don't begrudge for. I went back to everything that I was taught, the same look, the three stripes on the helmets, the the red and white uniforms, and, and some of the traditions and, and ceremonies are a major part of my program today, and, and I thank him for that. The other coach that I had the privilege to work for, uh, play for was John McKay. Now, Coach McKay was, was different. What I learned from Coach McKay was the business side of football. Watching him, um, Coach McKay was comfortable on the football field. He was tough. Uh, he had great players. We had great players back in the day at USC. But he also... I was always fascinated to hear him speak publicly and and how he was able to get the message of the University of Southern California across to whether it was a high school recruit or a group of businessmen, and and, and it it had an impact on me. Um, I tried to use myself as an advocate for Modern Day High School, the brand of Modern Day High School I promote constantly. And obviously now, I, you know, my full-time job uh, is, is in the area of fundraising with Mr. Patrick Murphy, and, and I'm selling that brand. And I'm fortunate. I'm selling what I believe in. I'm mm-hmm. selling what I love in. But a lot of that influence came from John McKay. And the other thing when you talk football-wise, I was always fascinated. Coach McKay was always ahead of where we were at in the game. Um, I played some, and, and I would hear him say, okay, when we score here, we want to do this. And those pearls of wisdom have helped me as a head football coach. So, yeah, I definitely uh, thank those two men for their, their mentoring and their guidance. Talking with Bruce Rollinson tonight on High School Football America, the 2016 National High School Coach Coaches Association Football Coach of the Year in America. I'm going to give a couple of quick stats here before the next question. Uh, Coach Rollinson's record at uh, Modern Day there, 272. Only 33 losses. He probably remembers each and every one of them <laughs> and two ties. Uh, 11 Southern Section title games, uh, five championships overall. USA Today's National Champion of the Year twice in the 90s. And we're just talking about uh, what uh, makes him uh, tick as a coach here uh, some 40-plus years later at uh, Modern Day, as you said. Uh, coach, the, the, the term role model is thrown around so many times uh, these days and in and, and, and high school football these days. In a lot of cases, unfortunately, uh, coaches are not only role models, but in some cases, father figures because of the broken families out there. Tell me what your definition in your mind is when you hear, you know, Coach Rollinson uh, is a role model or he's a father figure. Uh, what, what should that be? What are coaches out there listening to this show tonight? You know, what should they strive to be when it comes to those two very key terms? Well, I, 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 I like the way you phrase that because any coach that gets into this great game they have to understand that the values that are taught um, in football are the values that you're going to carry through life whether you're raising a family working in a business running a business I mean there's so much parallel from the game of football to life and the quicker you can understand that and teach that and promote that, I think the more success you're going to have. The second thing that younger coaches and and coaches that stay in the game is what you also mentioned. The influence that we have is tremendously powerful. And it doesn't matter whether it's a high-powered program like Modern Day or your whatever you know you want to say a lesser division it doesn't matter these kids are looking at you these kids they value what you say they value your positive input i mean you can literally destroy a kid in 
one or two sentences, and you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. And you can also make his day, make his week, make his month by some positive comments, especially head coaches. And, And did I get that right when I took over? No, but very quickly I knew because, as I mentioned earlier, I hung on every word that Dick Corey talked about. I hung on every word that John McKay talked about. And I sort of started to understand it when you're the leader, when the buck stops here. And when I look at that, I go, okay, I must accept this responsibility. Um, We're a Catholic school. So I have to, to the best of my abilities, share my Catholic values, not, you know, I'm not going to be out having any kind of religious, you know, interventions, but we have a model that we follow as Catholic men. I must, you know, I must adhere to that model within my personality. Um, And I think that's important. Uh, These these young men, like you mentioned, you're going to get them from affluent parents. You're going to get them from single parent homes, they're looking at you. And, and it, it, sometimes it's a daunting task. You know, I, I, I preach to my kids, I will always be here for you. When you graduate from modern day football, you graduate with the stripes moving from your helmet to your heart. And if I'm going to tell them I will always be there for them, I, I have to back that up. Yes, there's all the positives, Jeff, where kids call me, and, and this is the, you know, the rewards that I get now. I still hate losing, I despise losing, and I love victory. But I'm not going to have victory at all costs, and we're going to learn from our losses. But the affirmation now, the, the rewards I get are when kids call you 10 years later and say, Coach, I applied what you taught me and I just got a major job promotion, or they have a baby, a son, and they say, or a daughter, Mm -hmm. and they say, Coach, I'm going to try to raise my son or daughter with the values that you taught me. Now I'm fired up. Now I'm going, all right, he drank the Kool-Aid, he gets it. (laughs) But the other part of it is when they call you with adversity, you know, yes, I've I've done interventions. Yes, I've gone to jail and bailed kids out because they they to me it's my responsibility. I told them I'd always be here. I can't pay lip service to that. Um, have I saved them all? Absolutely not. But I've given it my best effort. So, you know that that's kind of where I see the role of any coach. You know, I'm not going to pontificate about, you know, all of the other uh, things that that are involved. And, and, you know, that that is up to the individual coach. But when I hire a young coach, I say, Coach, you put that coaching shirt on, you're a different man. You are the adult. They are the child. I know they don't look like children. Tommy Brown at (laughs) 6'8", 317 pounds, does not look like a child. But he's 17 years old, and he's in those formative years that I have to help and and young coaches have to develop. So, I mean, yeah, I get fired up when I talk about this stuff because it's important to me. You know, if I can leave any legacy, I want to have a legacy that says he was always there for us. He taught us values. He taught us ethics. You know, I'm big on work. I'm big on accountability because I think to be successful, you have to be able to deal with adversity and deal with success in stride. I think that you have to understand that there are setbacks in life and you can deal with them. Always saying, okay, you know, say a prayer at night, say a prayer in the morning, and, and then go about your business, but do it full speed, but do it the right way. Mm. 
some great nuggets in there. Bruce Rollinson, the 2016 NHSCA National Football Coach of the Year. It's a body of work, although this year another special one, and he's got some great kids coming back that we're going to talk about uh, in a few seconds. Modern Day in Santa Ana here in Southern California. I I think when we talk back in October, Coach, you may have touched on this, and and maybe that's the next question here. You said that you know after the 2011 season, you you had to reinvent yourself. You had to kind of take some stock in what you were doing and how you were doing it uh, and, and you made some changes that you think are, are the reason you know you, you you've turned things around and are having great years right now what were the things that you looked at and had to change because again it's the, the the football game right now is a young man's game right how many guys are we seeing nowadays that are becoming head coaches at you know 25 26 27 years old uh, you know you got to keep up with the young kids what did you do when you made that reevaluation <laughs> what did you find out about yourself other than uh, boy Bruce uh, you've had a long career <laughs> yeah exactly and you're getting older uh, <laughs> you know hey, Jeff the first thing that I had to come to grips with I, actually there were there were a multitude of things but the first thing that that I really had to say is okay Bruce stop this dinosaur attitude about technology you know looking at people saying oh I don't even have email I don't even know how to you know I'm still using a flip phone <laughs> I had to I had to, as fast as I could, get current in all of the aspects of technology, social media. Um, no, I don't have Facebook, but my wife does, and my, my two daughters do, Caroline and Catherine. And I had to learn the power of what these kids were doing on Facebook, now on, on Twitter and Snapchat. And, and, and I had to educate myself, and I also... By educating myself, I realized those are powerful tools for me to advocate this great high school. Um, That was one of the things. Um, Coinciding with that, I had to come to grips with something that I probably hung on too long and fought too long. I used to say that kids were not different. And I used to say the parents were different now. Mm Mm-hmm. I still believe the parents are different, but I've come to grips in the last four to five years that kids are different. They have more outside, whether you want to call them distractions or things that occupy their time, whether it's concerts, whether it's their, 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 their social presence in technology, but they're different. What I realize now is Kids, they want to play the great sport of football, but they want to be affirmed, and they also they, they want to have some fun in it. Now, there's a fine line here, Jeff, and I, you, know, you and I could go have a cup of coffee and talk about this for hours. I don't want you to think we run a happiness camp around here, but there has to be breaks in the action. There Mm -hmm. has to be interaction between myself, all my assistants, and the players. You have to get to know them. And when they deserve to be affirmed, when they deserve compliments, you have to share that. They have to know that you're there and you notice them. Okay, going in the 90s, yeah, we put a lot of focus on the starters and the primetime guys. And, you know, you'd say the rest of them, well, they, they've got to wait their time. The way it is now with social media, they're not going to wait their time. They're going to transfer. They're going to go somewhere else where they'll be affirmed, where they can get more um, exposure and maybe more fun. Hmm. Um, and again, you know, we don't run around and have, have you know, pie eating contests, <laughs> but, but there, there's a, there's a way of doing it. And you know what that way is going out and getting to know your kids and, and, and that number 90 kid or that number 80 on your roster you and I know there's something he did good that day. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was he was on time, but he probably ran a sprint or two or all of his sprints hard. you got to look for those things because sooner or later, 
you're going to count on that kid. And and I've been studying this more and more, and you know it, it, it's it's coming out of the youth ranks. You and I know again it's it's controversial, but these kids are already ranked as you know. I had a dad come up to me the other night, and fortunately I kept my cool. But he <laughs> said, "Do you understand? My son is the number one ranked." Quarterback twelve and under. <laughs> uh huh. I, I said, "Okie dokie, twelve and under." I don't even know if I'll still be the head coach when he's a freshman. <laughs> but I had to, I had to take a deep breath and say, "Well, that's fantastic." And and what I do is I flip and say, "Well, how are how's his grades? Mm-hmm. How's his study habits?" Because that's just as important as his crazy ranking in some magazine that you and I have never heard of. But the parents are hanging their hat on that. We have kids that, you know, and it permeates in Southern California. It's not just a modern-day high school. They announce what high school they're going to now. Oh, yeah. And they get into the And I'm going, whoa. Well, five years ago, I was just bad-mouthing that. Mm-hmm. Now I accept it. It's part of the culture. So let's hope they're announcing they're coming to modern day. <laughs> and then I've got to... I got to mold them and get them to drink the Kool Aid the way I want the Kool Aid drank. <laughs> oh. You know, it, and it, it, it's a process. But what I really believe is, okay, they've been affirmed. Now you've got to be more realistic. You got to hold them more accountable. But yet, you have to appreciate the sacrifice they're making. Does that make sense to you? It absolutely does. Uh, and and I yeah. had to bite my tongue there as you were going through the old rating service there because you and I could have spent all, well, it's only an hour show. We could have done eight hours on it. That's for sure. We're, exactly. <laughs> we're talking with Bruce Rollinson tonight. 2016 National High School Coaches Association National Football Coach of the Year. I'm just proud to have him as that. A couple more before we let you go here, Coach. Um, we all know football's a team sport and I I would be remiss if I didn't bring in this next person that's part of your team her name is Lori your wife tell me a little bit about the importance of having a good solid rock behind you making sure that you're able to win 272 games and championships and national championships tell us a little bit about your relationship and how important she is in your life you know what Jeff It, it 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 Early on in my career again, and I tell coaches this all the time, whatever you do, if you get an award, you better start out and you better thank your wife. (laughs) And you better, because if you don't have a football wife, I don't know how you stay in this crazy business. And I've got a great, great football wife. She's an unbelievable mother. She's an outstanding advanced placement history teacher here at Modern Day and, and you know, it, it, it's interesting to me. There's the people that should be getting the accolades. There, yeah, there might be some national teacher of the year, but they're not as plentiful as awards like you're presenting me today. And we are, you know, we get our our kudos every Saturday. Sometimes bad write ups if you lose, but. Those teachers that are grinding like my wife, Lori, day in and day out, and then I watch her as a mother to my two daughters, and, and we're, now, we're now grandparents to Matthew, our, our one-and-a-half-year-old. Um, you know, I mean, my wife, literally, we shake hands, we give each other a hug and a kiss on August 1st or August 2nd, and pretty much she says, all right, I'll see you sometime in December. Make sure you come home with a championship, and I'll hold the fort down. And when I say hold the fort down, I'm telling you, I, you know, I don't see the bills. I, I, none of that stuff. I, all I do is I have a rule. Thursday practice, I want to get out of here early. I'm going to stop. I'm going to get us a, our little Italian restaurant. Her and I have some quality time Thursdays. And then Saturday night is usually dinner for her and I where we can catch up on the kids. And, and But I do try to block out time to talk about what her needs are and, and, and about academics. But I love her to death, and, and you know, I'm lucky. I'm yeah. lucky. And, and 
you know, that's why you're a class act. You have to bring that up and give me the opportunity to share with the audience because I'm only as good as, as the family that's around me. And the other group of men that I tell every – you better thank your assistant coaches. Oh, yeah. I've been blessed. I've been blessed with great assistant coaches. Some of them, my offensive coordinator, Dave Money, we've been together since 1989. And, and my defensive coordinator, Eric Johnson, you know, there was a stint of six years in the in the 29 where, where he, you know, tried to tested the waters of head coaching and, and some community college coaching. But he's back with me. And I've had a myriad of, of, of other coaches. John Hopkins has been with me from day one. Those guys make your life a lot easier. And then, obviously, administrative support. You've got to have a great principal, Francis Clare. You've got to have a great president, Patrick Murphy, in my case, who support what you believe in and what you're trying to accomplish. But, um, you know, it's there are a lot of people behind the scenes, great boosters, Leo Bose, that have stayed with me for 20-plus years Um you know, you don't become the national coach of the year without a, a surrounding cast of characters that are there that that are always, you know, pulling the rope in the same direction. No, and you make my life easier too, Bruce, because uh, you took a couple of questions there. I was going to ask you about the assistant, so we can fast forward and get ready to wrap things up here. Bruce Rollinson from Modern Day in Southern California, National Coach of the Year for the NHSCA on the line. And uh, I joked earlier when I gave your your record, 33 losses. I'm going to ask you a serious question. How many of those do you actually remember, and uh, are they still sticking in your craw? (laughs) My championships? No, no, the, or the, 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 the thirty-three <laughs> losses. How many of those do you? No, no, not the championship losses. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, <laughs> that is a long time ago, and I and I actually think it was Coach McKay. You know, he said, "Hey, for you players that are planning on being coaches, you know, enjoy the victories because you'll never forget the losses." At the time, I go, "You know, yeah, he's right because I we didn't lose a lot of football games when I was at SC. You know, I lost two high school football games in my entire career, and I can tell you every play in every one of them. That's the sad part about this crazy business. Um, you know, it." it, it when when we we got in a really great battle, we we beat St. John Bosco the first time around in October, and I didn't want to have a rematch because beating somebody twice. But here's your best example, you know they beat us in the championship game. You know, it's the day after Christmas, and you know I, I told my wife, I said, yeah, I'm going to run into the office for a couple hours, and and. You know, I came home about seven hours later, and I said, well, I, I got it tied up. She goes, I know what you were doing. You were trying to figure out what went wrong in the championship game. <laughs> she goes, please let it go. You can't let it go. You can't let losses go. You got to learn from those losses. But that's the sad part about it. But that's also, I believe, what motivates me, what drives me, um, is trying to avoid those situations. And I think we can get back there next year. We got a great group of kids and hopefully uh, not another runner-up trophy. I got enough of those here recently. <laughs> well, like I said, you're pretty good at this broadcasting thing. You're obviously a great interview E. so uh, that takes us right into the question. You've got uh, uh, super sophomore junior to be JT Daniels, 100 times touchdown passes already I don't know how many records he's going to shatter other than probably all of them and you've got a lot of big kids coming back um, how excited are you and how good can you be to, to, to like you said exchange that uh, loss in the last game to a victory and maybe a state championship in 2017 Well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, let's face it. I got 10 of 11 offensive starters back with the quarterback that was the state player of the year. Um, You know, Osiris St. Brown going to Stanford is the only kid that that won't be on the field that people and I got, you know, a super soft Brew McCoy waiting in the wings um, to take his place. I got to rebuild the defense, Jeff. And and I like that challenge. and, And so does Eric, my defensive coordinator. Um, you know, we're going to look at it as a positive because we feel we have young talent waiting in the wings to, to you know, put the, put the pieces to the puzzle together. Um, I, I think you're, you're 
as a staff and as players, um, as the head coach, you're more motivated when you do come up short. And, and you know, there, there is a wealth of talent, and, and it's, it's, it's all attitude and it's all work ethic. Um, you know, it, it, it's what I'm presenting to the kids right now is, is you know, there's unfinished business. we got to go finish this thing. And, and, you know, will you do what it takes? Um, there, there's a great... Um, model that's been presented to them over the last, well, the, the, the entire tradition of modern day football, but they know what it takes from their senior brothers that just graduated and, and they've got to take it to the next level. But when you have those kind of experienced players, they know where they might have come up short, whether it's in training or nutrition. Um, and they also know that. I know what weaknesses I have to work on. So, you know, put all that together and, and, you know, as I said earlier in the interview, let's have some fun, you know, and let, let's go do this thing again. Uh, the taste is still fresh in their mouth. Uh, the run that we had, um, it, it, I'm going to make it more difficult. I've, I've got Bishop Gorman in, in week one. Uh, a major test for this program. Mm -hmm. uh, week three, we're going to tie into Bergen Catholic out of New Jersey, another major test. But I think we need that. I think we can handle that to get ready for the Trinity League. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm generating a lot of excitement throughout the community. And, and you know, with, with when you have your offensive line with, with Brown and Murray and, and Gonzalez and Colin check back, you know, it's, it, you're breathing a lot easier. I, the, the young tailback that emerged, uh, the Harper kid is special. And then, like you say, I mean, I, I look like a heck of a football. Maybe that's why I got the honor. Cause I got a quarterback that's <laughs> off the charts. I mean, he is. You know what? He, let me give you a best, the best example, Jeff, if Go we ahead. have time. You sure do. We started our youth camps, which are totally legal in, Cal in anywhere. Okay, we have a quarterback camp. We have a strength camp, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. It's 6 o'clock last Tuesday, a week ago tonight. And I'm wheeling and dealing young kids, and they're nervous, and I'm talking to their parents about registration, zabba, zabba, zabba. 6 o'clock, it's, you know, for Southern California, it was kind of a chilly evening. You're going to New York. You'll find out what cold is. But <laughs> I look over, and there's JT Daniels in his cleats. He's got his sweats on. And I go, JT, what are you doing? And he goes, Coach, he goes, I truly believe that these youth camps that I attended here at Modern Day, because we had them since he was a sixth grader, he goes, those helped my career so much. He goes, I want to give back. I'm going to work wow. these camps for you. I'm going to be out there. I want to talk to these young players about the importance of classroom study. And I thought to myself, well, I think I've seen it all now. I mean, here mm -hmm. we are on January 19th or whatever the date was. And this kid, and we, we lifted in the morning. He could have been home by 3.30 in the afternoon. But here he was, you know, that's what I'm, you know, that's what I'm most proud of. Yeah, I mean, he's, he can throw it, he can do everything you want him to do, but he's also a 4.3 GPA, and he's just a high-quality kid. You get kids like that, you know, you look like a pretty good football coach. Yeah, and and you know, thank you for sharing that story. Uh, as I told you, the one of our interviews or one of our chats on the sideline, I've I've seen over eleven hundred games in person. I, I don't know over forty years how many kids I've interviewed or had the pleasure of covering and giving some publicity to. Uh, there there is that one percent or even less than one percent, and JT fits into that. As far as a young man, when you talk to him, you get the picture. He is the true student athlete, and just proud that I've gotten to see him play out here and have two more years. Coach, I'm also proud yeah. to say, I'm, I'm so proud to say that I've gotten to know you because we, uh, one of the things that I love about what I've done since uh, I was 14 years old was I got to meet a lot of great coaches, but my favorites are the guys, unfortunately to say this, the old guys that have been doing it for decades, and you're one of them, and you teach me something every time I have a chance to interview you. So thank you for taking the time. Congratulations on the award, and I look forward to uh, seeing you in 2017. 
Jeff, thank you, and, and I, I'm excited. You know, to you know, it, it, it's it really. You know, I, I've said this to you, and I'm going to say it publicly in front of the audience. It's a breath of fresh air when you get a professional reporter who cares about the kids and who wants to do the right thing, say the right thing, get them the right exposure with professionalism and, and class, and that's who you are, and, and it's an honor for me. And I also, again, thank you very, very much for nominating me, Jeff. This honor means a lot to me. Well, you're very welcome, and thank you for the kind words, Bruce. I, I, I just have had so much fun on this call, and I look forward to a great year. So thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. All right, I'll see you down the road. Go Monarchs. There you go. Taking a break, coming back with more. You're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current, booth, and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 16 12's cutting edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at tdirazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover's service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can 
can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's show from Dallas, Fort Worth in Texas. I'm uh, going to talk to you about what we're doing with crossover here in the coming weeks, but it's been a, a good run here in Texas. We're going to be on the road uh, giving the show to you for the next uh, month from the road. Uh, a couple of different stops in New York next week. Uh, just having some fun out there building the uh, brand of High School Football America. want to congratulate our National Coach of the Year, Bruce Rollinson, especially for joining us and sharing uh, some of his thoughts on uh, the sport in general and uh, a career that's been incredible as a student an athlete and a coach at uh, Modern Day, uh, spanning uh, four decades here in Southern California. And I uh, also want to congratulate Tate Martell, our National Player of the Year. What a run he had at Bishop Gorman. Uh, national champs for us this year, con- consensus national champs, uh, all four of the ranking services having Bishop Gorman number one this year. Uh, Bishop Gorman has won three straight USA Today Super 25 championships. And uh, Kenny Sanchez won the, was on the show last week talking about the run that the Gales have had. You can listen to all of our past interviews uh, by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. Don't forget our coach's job board is cracking. We've got 300 uh, openings, uh, active openings right now on the coach's job board. You can email us if you want to post your opening by emailing us at job posting at highschoolfootballamerica.com. Keep up with us when we're gone uh, by uh, following us on Twitter at HSFB America. That is our handle. And uh, make sure you uh, patronize all of our partners, Crossover, Echo, the TDI Razor folks, uh, USA Today High School Sports, and ScoreStream. For now, this is Jeff Fisher saying good night and good sports from the Metroplex in the state of Texas. You've been listening to High School Football America.